Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This is Chad 33 bringing you a match between Dante Laurel and N42K on Alien Desert. This map is a fairly small map and more appropriate for 1v1 than Terra was. I did not realize how large Terra was, and it is a very large map. Over this map, as you can see, quite clearly has only enough metal spots for the amount of players we're seeing right now. Nowhere near as many metal spots as the last one did. So it'll be much more appropriate. We're seeing tanks versus cars with N42K building some cars, starting with the Dart, good scout unit, while we see that Dante Laurel is starting with a Welder, which is a perfectly appropriate start for tanks. Welders are pretty much the only building unit that has any means of attack, and they're basically the frontline attack force, early, or frontline defense force for the tank factory. Because they can defend well, they defend themselves, they have quite a lot of health, and every tank unit is really expensive. Like, the cheapest unit is 180 metal, and that, even that, you need to micromanage well enough to not die. For reference, Shieldbot, Clickbot Factory, it's about 65 or 80 metal or so for your Raider unit. And that's... So that's saying something. The heavy tanks need to not have the units die. And darts, however, are quite cheap. 40 metal coming in, and very cheap. This one killing itself, in fact. Very slightly killing itself in the process of getting rid of the mechs, but it is able to get rid of one of these metal extractors. Two of the metal extractors, actually... Dante Laurel's commander not coming back in time to be able to deal with it. It is able to ultimately beam to energy cell in the morph, so standard early morph. While N42K not morphing his commander, not sure if he doesn't have an energy cell morph. Very typical. As I mentioned before, that's basically the standard build for commanders. Level 1, energy cell beam laser. There are other things you can do, but especially early on given the skill range of the players, beam laser energy cell is the reliable opener. Like, Beam Laser Energy Cell Support Commander. There's a Bombard Commander being used for Dante Laurel, but he's still able to get a fair amount from it. He's able to still stabilize with no power structures whatsoever. He's able to stabilize power, not metal. He's still working on metal, but he was harassed, which kind of makes sense. On the other hand, no harassment from Dante Laurel. His Kodachi just being finished. Kodachis are extremely powerful, but you have to make sure they don't die. They can one-shot a metal extractor. They have a fire attack, napalm attack. Deals lasting damage. The damage over time destroys a metal extractor in one shot, assuming it's not repaired. A couple scorches coming in, however, getting rid of the metal extractor once again and trying to take out the commander. And it looks like they, well, they won't succeed, but they definitely deal quite a bit of damage. They get it to have health and should be able to heal up by the time any further raiding units come in. Another scorcher coming in from N42K, and now he's focusing on builders more, getting himself built up, getting his base built up, getting some defenses going as well. So the Kodachi can't do too much. It can, however, do a fair amount. Even with the laser turrets here, it can still get in, fire on the metal extractor, and get out and not die. And this metal extractor here is free to destroy. However, the commander is in the way. The Kodachi needs to not get killed. Able to hit the commander, but that was not his priority target. However, is also able to live, which is the important part. If it retreats back to base, gets repaired, and then comes back for another pass, takes out the metal extractor, he could do some damage with that. And it looks like he's not really able to deal the commander much damage, which isn't to be expected. The Scorcher is able to get down to half health, but the main purpose of the Kodachis would be to get rid of this metal extractor. And it looks like this Mason's going to be building a defense turret right next to that metal extractor. Radar has been built as well. However, the radar is not actually that useful. The, well, N42K has not enough power infrastructure to be able to use it. Instead of focusing on construction with its power rather than focusing on powering buildings. So his radar not really getting a lot of power going to it. As enough right now, he is able to deal with actually seeing what's going on, but that was not always the case. Whereas N4, or Dante Laurel not actually focusing on radar yet, and just getting his power infrastructure up, he does have a power disadvantage, but he also has fewer buildings he can be harassed. His commander is his main power source, which is of course why you'd want to not have the commander die like to those Scorchers a couple minutes ago, but not an issue. However, why these Kodachis are in the corner of the map, I don't know. Especially this one here that's at full health. The one that's damaged, I can see why, so it can go and regenerate health. The really should have gone back to base and gotten repaired. What he needs to have it do is... Like I said, go back to base, have it repaired, and then have these two go on separately. One of them attack this extractor, the other one attack this extractor. Especially since the Lotus isn't actually built up yet. But I think this Kodachi is going to just hit the Lotus directly and not go for the extractor instead. And, yep, hitting the Lotus. That will... Oh, bit of a wasted shot. That He will be able to get rid of this metal extractor, however. That has gone down, and the Mason will probably go down fairly soon after. The reload is not is fairly long in direct combat, but seeing as these Kodachis are completely on their own, and nothing's trying to stop them, it's not a big deal. All they need to do is take out these metal extractors right here, and they are not going for it. Scorcher coming around to try to deal with them. The radar can see it, but... 
Panther coming in as well. Panther are EMP lightning assault tanks. They are actually not that powerful. They're kind of considered to be a useless unit in the lab. It's something that it can be useful. EMP is always handy for stopping things, but they are generally considered to not be the most to be one of the least useful units in the heavy tank lab. At this point, I would just either go for getting well, banishers maybe. Reapers probably if you're going to go for a solid assault force. The Kodachis are great for raiding. You only need about one or two as long as you can micromanage them well enough. And it looks Welcome back, Zero K fans. I apologize for that delay. My computer spontaneously locked up. It's been doing that recently. Not sure why. I think the hard drive is starting to go. I can't find anything else. Everything else I've tested and seems to work properly. Anyway, back to the game. Should be able to recover what I have so far. Let's pick up where we left off. So to recap, we had Dante Laurel and... N42K, Dante Laurel is going as tanks, he had a couple Kodachis set up, and a Panther going towards... Well, he d had done some harassment, he's going to continue that job Well, N42K went for cars, has quite a few Scorchers set up, looks like he's trying to counter-harass, not really going for much harassment himself, as Dante Laurel expands quite a lot, although both players are expanding fairly aggressively. Actually, N42K is expanding to the center of the map, so that's probably the most aggressive one can go. Anyway, let's continue this game. As I mentioned, Dante Lirel is trying to go for this harassment here. Not really caring about the laser tower, and nor should he. he needs to go for that metal extractor. Get those Kodachi out of the way. Unfortunately, Kodachi going the wrong way. That Kodachi will die. Second Kodachi not able to do much damage. The first Kodachi, however, has died, as has the Panther. They only get rid of the Lotus and the metal extractor, which means that the car factory could be next. Right here, there's more than enough range. This Kodachi could spin around again and take out the car factory, or at least deal some damage to it. It's not doing so, however, it should... If it's not going to do that, go for these melee strategies and harass them, while N42K is going up north with the Scorchers to make sure there's nothing built there. Not a bad idea. Dante Lidorel could have been building some mechs here. He is, in fact, building them along the east side of the map, but the north side of the map would have been just as valid of a target. While N42K does that, you see, Dante Lidorel building up with... He does have enough metal to do this. I haven't actually been pointing out the amount of metal either player has had. He is accessing at 26 metal income, while N42K is at 21 metal income. And Dante Lirel about to use, lose his commander. That's gonna that's gonna be a hit in his energy economy. As we see, his energy economy not entirely reliant on his commander, but that was still a hit. About eight energy lost right there. He lost his commander. And see, N42K is focusing more on the commander as itself, as assault commander, flamethrower, and some speed upgrades. Not focusing on using it for strategic purposes as Dante Lirel had been. And Dante Lorel with his caretaker now building up more in the heavy tank factory. And this is what you really want to do with the heavy tank factories. You get the caretakers, and then their build times go down to something reasonable. So you can start getting, actually, you can start getting Goliaths even, but start getting Reapers within like 20 seconds or so rather than having to wait a minute and a half. Which is what you have to wait normally when it comes to the build time. The Reapers, 850 metals, that's 85 seconds right there, the normal build time, assuming you have the resources for it. But given that Dante Lorel has, so you can see, well, 21 metal right now, but he can easily reclaim more. N42K actually... N42K has the advantage. Never mind, he has 25 metal to Dante Lorel's 22, so Dante Lorel can reclaim himself up a bit. And he is reclaiming his commander for this purpose, a very good idea. But that's only going to be a temporary boost. What he needs to have is something more permanent to make this actually work out. He's building a lot of welders, getting a couple Panthers, but really what he needs is Ravagers. Or Kodachis. The Panthers are not bad, but... Other than the Scorchers, and even then, they don't do a huge amount. But the Scorchers are the main thing they're going to be useful against. Against Levelers and Ravagers, what he wants is Reapers. And Levelers and Ravagers are what's coming up now. Welder is doing a decent job against the Leveler, but the Scorchers coming in. And the Panthers, like I said, do well against the Scorchers. That's where they're going to shine. So against these Scorchers, good thing to build a lot of those. Against pretty much anything else, it's not going to be quite so good. But the Scorchers are definitely a reason to do it. And... Enough Panthers coming in here, are able to take out this line of Scorchers, losing one of the Panthers in the process, but still getting rid of all these Scorchers, and within Dante Lorel's territory as well, so Dante Lorel can easily reclaim this if he so chooses, which he probably will, because his welders can easily go into this area. I mean, his welders were actually leading the fight, and not doing a terrible job of it either, and he has half a dozen welders, actually, almost a dozen welders, easily can take care of this. Need to get a Kodachi down here to take out the Metal Extractor, which is exactly what he seems to be doing, and he's, of course, going to be probably buffeted a bit by these levelers coming in here. I'm gonna try to do what they can, and like I said, Panther's not quite as effective as, say, Ravager would be. 
but still, still powerful. I mean, they're not something to be sneezed at too much. They aren't the most powerful units, and they have been kind of nerfed into oblivion according to some players. But as riot units, they do seem to do a very good job. Definitely fast enough, and the lightning attack is extremely useful. The splash damage. The downside, I believe, is the damage output. But in this case, it has worked out against the Scorchers. But like I said, he does need to get possibly Banishers, definitely Reapers. He is actually starting to get Reapers now, once these Welders are done. And building a lot of Welders is never a bad thing for a tank player, like I said before. They are not a bad... For workers, they are not a bad Assault unit. And of course, they're workers, so they can reclaim and build up and just take out the map. And just control the entire thing. But as it stands, we see that N42K coming with his Commander has quite a few speed upgrades and auto repair upgrades as well. Able to take out these welders with dual flamethrowers quite nicely. However, that is right now N42K's main, actually only attack force. He has like, four levelers here. I'm sorry, two levelers, four scorchers. And that's about it. Against all these welders and panthers, that's not going to be too much going for him. And with Raptors now coming in, we see coming in from the north. Sorry, not Raptors, Reapers. Raptors being the car equivalent, that's my mistake. Reapers coming in from the north. And they will be able to deal quite a bit of damage to, well, to the commander mostly. The commander fully upgraded now, very quick. In fact, I think the, Rav the Reaper might have a hard time against it. The no Raptors, however, coming in from the car factory from N42K. And the Reaper, really, its main purpose is going to be, well, getting rid of Metal Extractors in one shot. And getting rid of any Assault Units that come up. So, the Levelers somewhat, and... Or, never mind, apparently the Levelers actually are not super strong against Panthers. The Panthers are doing a fine job against them. Probably for cost, it's not that great of a deal, but... No, actually, for cost, it works out fine. 240 to 320. So, Levelers are being taken up by the Panthers. The use of Panthers is paying off. However, M42K's use of... A flamethrower commander is also partly paying off. His The commander coming in and now has to be dealt with directly. One of the Reapers in here tried to deal with it. Taking out the shields in one shot, but really, it, that's a big thing. At the same time, Reaper coming in to N42K's base. Try to take that out. Try to take out, take out the laser very quickly. Take out the factory as well. The commander needs to go down if N42K is going to lose this game. If Dante Laurel is going to win. And the commander is deep retreating. But at the same time, Light Vehicle Factor taking a lot of damage. The Reaper will be able to take care of it. The Panther's locking everything else down. And the Kodachi just burning everything it can in the meantime. And in the north, we see that N42K continue to expand. However, he's lost everything in the middle. Now, what Dante the needs to do is to continue to expand himself. Get to the south. Get get this reclaim. Why has he not gotten this reclaim yet? It's in his territory. These welders are right here. But he's not doing that yet. The factory has been destroyed. Light Vehicle Factory is down. And a gunship factory being built to the northwest for N42K. But really, the commander is the main assault force, taking out a fair amount of the economy for Dante Lorel. Dante Lorel actually at 23 metal income compared to N42K's 27. But N42K starting to lose some of that. He is taking a lot of damage in the back. Though he is able to take over one of the Panthers by his laser turret. Looks like. No, two of the Panthers now. Three of the Panthers, actually, terrible micromanagement on the part of Dante Laurel. He's lost all of his Panthers. That, at this point, they did pay for themselves. In this one, in this case, twice over. But you still don't want to lose them if you don't have to. The Reapers are his big one, and the factory getting under direct attack. N42K's commander coming in here will be to destroy this factory right now. No replacement factory being built quite yet, and I imagine one will be built very soon. These welders are in a good position for it. The gunship factory has been complete. Banshee's coming up. Fairly decent assault unit for the gunship factory, and since no anti-air defenses are actually no stack defenses, really whatsoever, are up anymore for or very few some defenders, but which actually are anti-air defenses, still should be fairly effective. The defenders will go down fairly quickly, and they aren't supporting each other very well, so the gunships shouldn't have a problem. The main issue is just that they also aren't going to be able, able to take care of the tanks quickly enough to get rid of them before they're able to destroy all the metal extractors. The main advantage that N42K has is just how spread out he is and how slow Dante Lorel's forces are, and the fact that Dante Lorel really only has now his own gunship plant, and this Reaper, and the Kodachi as well, but really the Reaper, the Panther Kodachi are going to go down very quickly. The Banshees, as soon as they see them, they're going to kill them. And this commander has definitely paid off, getting rid of Dante Lorel's entire base. Dante Lorel now in the back foot, although both players 
have pretty much base swap, or at least destroy each other's bases, so it's fairly even, but N42K is a much... Well, it's a stronger economy other than Dante Lorel's Reclaim. Oh no, actually, Dante Lorel is doing fine. He's managed to rebuild his economy well enough. In fact, a bit better than N42K, so both players are still fairly even, fairly even for base. N42K, however, does have more units, and he is able to chase away these units with his gunships. Unfortunately, they didn't continue to try to harass. That Reaper's going to be going down soon enough, too. It cannot really deal with the air. And that is it. No real damage dealt by the tanks. And that is the end of the tank factory story for Dante Laurel losing all of his tanks other than the welders. Which actually aren't anything to sneeze at, but still, his main assault force is now gone. Building up some rapiers for anti-air against the Banshees, but really the main thing is going to be this. This here, Commander, that's going to destroy everything. Getting rid of one of the defenders, so he opens a spot for his Banshees. I think N42K has this game. More units being built up, some rapiers are being built up for Dante Lorel, but it's just not enough. Dante Lorel has enough economy to support it, but they aren't being built fast enough compared to the Banshees. The Banshees had an advantage, they just started sooner. And now, just taking care of what's set up here, the economy going down very quickly. Another defender going down, like I said, enough Banshees will be able to take care of the defenders without issue. And they aren't supporting each other, no chainsaws or hacksaws, nothing, no real powerful anti-air force, just the defenders. Metal Extractor is going down quickly as well. The Banshees are doing a great job at this point. Dante Lorel is actually reclaiming quite a lot from the looks of it. But other than that reclaim, which will last him a long time, he's reclaiming Dante Lorel's... Reclaiming N42K's entire base. N42K not doing anything with Dante Lorel, so... Dante Lorel still at an advantage. And the Rapiers are going to be coming in to deal the damage they can. And the Welders also doing some harassment of their own. Not a whole lot. They don't deal a huge amount of damage. Enough to defend themselves, but... Why are these rapiers not moving in for the Banshees? Let's see, these rapiers, there's about... You now it's five of them against nine Banshees. Okay, I guess it kind of makes sense. The Banshees aren't that weak. However, rapiers are designed for anti-air. And I really would like to see how they work out in this case. I would suspect they'd be fine. But it doesn't matter, the Banshees are coming in here to take care of these welders. And it's enough Banshees that it doesn't matter how tough the welders are. They're going down quickly, however, the welders have taken out this base. Regardless, the reclaim is gone. Dante Lorel now at 13 metal income. He can barely support this factory. He's doing what he can. Getting these rapiers up here. Trying to take out this commander. And they really have the best chance of anything. But even then, the flamethrowers shooting in the sky and taking out as much of them as they can. Really, what Dante Lorel would need is a crow, I suppose. Maybe a brawl that would get it out of the way fast enough. But a crow... Okay, can't even afford a crow. Black Dawn, maybe. Something a bit more salty. Doesn't matter though, Cobra being built up, this actually probably should be attacked fairly quickly. That's that's a big deal. This Cobra is going to take out everything that's being built up right now for Dante Lorel. And Dante Lorel not building a whole lot of anti air defense himself, getting some defenders, but at this point he has no economy. All he's really waiting for is losing the rest of his metal extractors, and he only has one. This one right here. That's, that's about it. These two down here as well, but they're heavily defended. Everything... However, he doesn't have much. While well, M42K has about a quarter of the map, one his quarter of the map, the top left corner right now. Dante Lorel right now could probably... Sheesh, I'm not say building out of the factory. He's invested quite a bit into the gunships right now. But with his Cobra coming up, as the Cobra will be able to take out all of these rapiers as soon as he gets the chance. Well, not quite a chance. The rapiers are getting out of its line of fire, but it's still... The Rapier is trying to get rid of these Banshees, too slow to deal with them effectively, and unable to defend anything that Dante Lorel had built. So Dante Lorel has seven metal income right now, entirely based on these metal extractors. And N42K is going for the kill. This is going to be an N42K's commander, dealing quite a lot of Well, getting rid of everything. These flamethrowers paying off. Yet another assault commander paying off. Really, a lot of it has to do with Dante Lorel just not keeping his tanks alive well enough. Because those Reapers could have taken out everything. That one Reaper alone could have taken out everything along here. Just on its own. With the Kodachi Panther support, that was even better. But that, he did not micromanage enough. And these Rapiers getting torn apart by the Cobra. Just finishing the deed. There is nothing left for Dante Lerol. Looks like he's going to try to rebuild a little bit. But it's not going to last too much longer. He's about building a shield block factory right next to... Well, okay, it doesn't really matter. He's building it right next to N42K. But N42K is well aware that this is happening. He can see it, let alone radar. He can actually just see it. His... His mason is right there. He was putting a little communication point just to make it absolutely clear that he knows what's going on. So yeah, this is done. 
There is nothing more Dance Little can do. The Shield Buff Factory not even complete, just a Nano Frame, and Black Dawn taking it out. As well as the Nano as well as the Nano Frame for the Caretaker. Now I should point out this is actually a pretty good idea. Building a Caretaker to build help out with a factory is not a bad idea, especially if you have enough income to support it, but at this point, Dan Taylorell has six metal income. He has... Where is he getting that income from anyway, actually? That's a little surprising. He actually is getting some income. No, he's not getting income. I'm sorry. I misread that zero as a six. He has no middle income. He has what he has in reserves, and that's not going to be enough for anything. So Dan Taylorell has lost the game. Looks like he's just waiting for everything to be destroyed. Well, that's not something I'm going to wait for. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that as N42K finished up Dante Lorel. And that is game right about now. So I hope you enjoyed that, and that will be it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed that.